and they don't just get a blanket answer on how to deal with narcissistic abuse. But what, mm-hmm. what in actuality does narcissistic abuse, from your perspective and, and, and from your helping others, what does narcissistic abuse literally smell, feel, and taste like? What is it mm-hmm. like for someone mm-hmm. who has no idea, maybe they want to be compassionate towards mm-hmm. someone that uh, is telling them, hey, this is what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they're beginning their journey. Mm -hmm. And they have no idea and just started Googling it. Mm -hmm. Give us that perspective on what does it actually sound and feel like? You know, that's such a great question, Paxton, because that's exactly right. Honestly, I've that's probably the most common comment that I get, which is that I'll be describing a situation and then people recognize that's my situation. I didn't know that there was a name for this. I didn't understand that this is actually called narcissistic abuse. And, uh, and because I was explaining how they might be feeling, they actually come to the realization that that's what they are experiencing themselves. So, um, and again, this is, it can be, this is a a general, um, answer to this question, I, I want to make sure that I say that only because there are different types of narcissists, right? So there, narcissism isn't just one thing. It doesn't look, feel, uh, uh, come across as just one uh, thing because there's different types of narcissists. And of course, the personality of the specific narcissist will also come across in the way that they do abuse. Um, but just for people to kind of get a uh, get some kind of grid point for what we're talking about, we are talking about um, feeling like they're never heard, right? That their partner or that the the person that they they suspect of being a narcissist lacks empathy. That they that it's always all about them. That they're uh, feeling as though they're um, kind of being brought along for the ride of the show, which is all about the narcissist. So they're never center stage, and if there should be a reason why they do get center stage, such as promotion or uh, a birthday, even any kind of thing that puts somebody else in center stage, it's quickly removed by the narcissist who cannot uh, stand to share the limelight. They feel entitled to things. They believe that they are more important than other people. They must constantly have the praise, attention, and recognition of other people. And this doesn't have a limit, right? Even if it's clear that that type of behavior is not being rewarded in the, in the system that they are performing those behaviors in the narcissist doesn't care. They don't have the, um, the ability to say, okay, that's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. They're so driven by, uh, being the center of somebody else's attention of receiving their praise of their receiving their admiration that they will continue to, to do uh, their harmful behavior, even when it's not having the intended or desired outcome. So what this comes across, what this actually looks like when you're in, uh, a relationship with somebody who has narcissistic abuse. And again, I use that as a very general term, this could be a boss, Mm -hmm. it could be a parent, what have you, um, you're going to experience gaslighting. So in other words, you will feel as though there's consistent misrepresentation, lying, denial, manipulation mm-hmm. um, of, of your words and situations to make mm-hmm. you think that what you are experiencing never took place, has not happened, is not happening now. Um, it wow. it uh, makes you think that you can't trust yourself. Gaslighting's whole um, um, reason that narcissists employ this is to get you to doubt yourself and to rely more heavily on the narcissist so that the narcissist seems to be like the only person who knows your true North, the person who can, wow. uh, really give you the, uh, validity of the things that you've been experiencing are only found from your interaction with the narcissist. So um, I gotta, I gotta ask a question then mm-hmm. because you, you mentioned misrepresentation. So this is deliberate than what you're saying. They deliberately, uh, they deliberately misrepresent what, let's say it's me. The person would deliberately gaslight me or misrepresent what I'm saying or what I'm feeling or an event or or something that happened Mm -hmm. for the whole fundamental purpose to make me not believe my own truth, but believe whatever they say and whatever truth or structure or reality that they set. 
And that mm-hmm. could take me, that could take me anywhere then. That's right. And, and one of the side effects of having gaslighting done to you, especially over a long period of time is what we call crazy making. So the narcissist but, uh, does. I have to ask a question. I have to, so what do you say is a long period of time? That's a really good one. Cause mm. now I'm sitting there trying to think maybe, maybe one year or six months is something to one person, but maybe somebody may be a little stronger and take it for like 10, 12. I'm just thinking of somebody right now for mm-hmm. 40 years, the lady was mm-hmm. telling me. She finally figured out her husband was gaslighting her and it was really bad, but I'm not going to get into that. But Mm -hmm. so some may take only a few months or I'm just asking. And actually some may take less than that. The, the, um, (laughs) the term gaslighting, Uh uh, uh, I'm sure that most people are aware of this already originates from a movie that was produced in the Mm forties called gaslight. And in this video, the, um, husband tries to uh, uh, rewrite essentially his wife's history and what she's experienced. And so sometimes this can, this is done by creating a trauma bond. And that trauma bond uh, uh, can be built with actually in less than two days. And what we used to call Stockholm syndrome, we now call the trauma bond. And the original uh, name Stockholm syndrome comes from a situation where there was some bank robbers in mm-hmm. Stockholm who ended up taking hostages in, uh, in a bank and they held the hostages. These are customers and, um, you know, bank employees, they held them hostage for, um, just over 38 hours. And, um, in that amount of time, the mm-hmm. bank robbers actually caused what we call Stockholm syndrome to many of the people in mm-hmm. the bank. So actually one of them ended up marrying one of the hostages. Uh, one of the hostage takers ended up marrying one of the hostages. Another one ended up, um, uh, uh, starting and then getting donations for the hostages legal funds. Uh, and then we're talking about being around somebody for less than two days. So the trauma bond, you're exactly right, can happen quite quickly for some people, less than two days. We're not talking about an extended period of time as we might right. imagine six months or um, yeah. a year, but two days of, of non-interrupted connection with that person is enough to develop this trauma bond. And f- through the trauma bond is how the narcissist is able to, the, the trauma bond is basically the tool the narcissist use or the road the narcissist use to make an inroad with their victim so that they can employ things such as gaslighting, passive aggressive behavior. Um, you know, uh, uh, I was just joking, sarcastic Ooh, statements, wow. things like that. And wow. so they will use the fact that they know that that person is trauma bonded to them. In other words, they are, are addicted to the way that they feel when they are with or around that person. And the narcissist is very well aware of that. So great question. It does not need to be a long period of time. What I meant to say by, uh, by people who have been gas lit for an extended period of time, meaning, uh, over a year dealing with this for over a year, it's easy to, um, to lose who who you are, your sense of self, your self of self, uh, your self sense of identity, um, yeah. your self esteem, and things of that nature. And when this happens, you can absolutely see that the um, abuse is escalating during this time because the narcissist knows that there isn't any uh, limit uh, that they they could push you to that you wouldn't be willing to to take at that point. And literally. The I'm just going to so the victim or should I say victim, the target Mm -hmm. uh, of this abuse Mm -hmm. essentially thinks that it's everything is okay in this time, frame, even if it was two days, because if hey look at the lady when it married the guy that kidnapped her, Mm -hmm. another one started. (laughs) So they were convinced Mm -hmm. that that person was going to need their help was essentially that kidnapper or the person doing the gaslighting. The narcissist makes a person believe that, well, you know what? I'm the victim here. Really, you can help me and and we can be together. And matter Mm -hmm. of fact, I'm going to benefit you. But Mm -hmm. actually, the whole time they're playing with that person's mind and emotions and their heart. Absolutely. And it's the 
Initially, what a lot of people um, experience when the narcissist makes their um, debut into the victim's life is that they start believing that they're very misunderstood. Uh, the narcissist oh. is misunderstood, <laughs> that they they feel extreme sympathy for the narcissist. Um, and a lot of people who are um, who will entertain narcissists at this stage, simply have the are not aware that there could okay. potentially even be people who would say or do yeah. something to them that's harmful to them on purpose because in their mind they could never do that right and so they uh, the ability okay. from them to be able to say yeah there's the people out there who would actually lie to me manipulate me um and also that it would be for their gain and not at all for my gain. Th th their it, ability it would never cross their mind. It would, never. as a target, it, they're literally just enjoying life and thinking that, well, mm -hmm. just as surely as I wouldn't do nothing that mean and stupid to somebody, well, manipulative and technically vicious in yeah. the long run. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're thinking, well, no, this person needs my help. You know, I've helped other people before, nothing bad has happened. So this is just another scenario, but no, not really. There is an underlying agenda that that person has in mind and it's not good. Absolutely. And as you can see with the um, Stockholm syndrome, going back to the woman who ended up marrying the one of the kidnappers um, to to her death, she um, is she advocated for her wow. husband, the kidnapper, um, saying that he was misunderstood, that, you know, the state had failed to provide him with the things that he needed in order to have a healthy yeah. outlook, that he was he was actually mm -hmm. the victim of the entire thing. So um, absolutely. Uh, the 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 person that they that they pick, they are able to read very well. They know that this person has a uh, strong codependent traits uh, mm -hmm. that this person will not set boundaries, that this person would be easy to isolate and ultimately manipulate for whatever end state the narcissist had in mind. And, and this is, this is real. Now, mm -hmm. some may watch this back and think, well, that's just people that pick somebody bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. That could be an element to it. But mm -hmm. the reality of it is, this is real. This actually happens to people more than others may even think of, maybe just because it hasn't happened to them yet, mm. it probably happened to somebody they know or in their family line. What you don't understand uh, from the outside looking in, what a lot of people mm -hmm. can't understand is that during this phase of the trauma bonding being formed uh, okay. is that there's an extreme element of love bombing. You know, this is mm. where the person makes the, the victim uh, feel like, you know, they just can't survive without them. They're everything that they've been looking for, waiting for. They, um, they just simply can't go on without them. Their, uh, their undying love is professed <laughs> instantly. Oh, wow. And crazy. this has the emotional and mental trigger to, uh, to allow our brains to dump a ton of chemicals that make us addicted to the feeling that we get when we're around the narcissist, extreme amounts of oxytocin uh, are being released into the bloodstream at this point, which is further strengthening the trauma bond, because you're going to want to believe that this person, yeah, this love right. bombing person, the, yeah. the version of the narcissist doing that is the real uh, version of the narcissist. It's not until later on that you're going to discover that these cycles of ups and downs and all arounds, these roller coasters are deliberate, they're intentional, and they're to make you uh, further trauma bonded to the narcissist and, uh, and that they have happen quickly enough for you to not have time to sit and reflect. It's designed so that you will not have the time to mm analytically look at the situation yeah. and say to yourself, this has been happening for far too long. I can't deal with this. I can't go up and down. Um, you know, I can't do that anymore. And it's done deliberately. This is a very fast paced situation where you won't have time to, uh, actually look at the big picture. You'll just be so consumed with how you're feeling at this moment. And that's by design. So the, then, uh, let's say it's happening to me. So if it's happening to me, then I never really get a chance to go, wait a minute now, 
because here comes the love bomb, love bombing, as you mentioned, it, it's, it's swinging back around. Okay, so then uh, I calm down a little bit and go like, okay, they just had a bad day, you know, blame it on somebody else, the boss, the kids, the dog, you know, whatever car accident, I can, I can blame it on something else, which was probably manipulated by them anyhow. Yeah. Uh, who you can blame it on just as long as you don't blame it on them from what I'm understanding that you're saying. But mm. just as surely as I get the love bombing angel, you're telling me now that then they're going to go, what's the next phase? So love bombing. Mm -hmm. In other words, what are the stages? I'm just curious. I'm just asking. Yeah. So it will always start with the love bombing phase. Okay. The next will be, will come with the devaluation in this phase. The narcissist wants you to know that you're nothing to them. You could never make it without them. You are not ever going to survive. You couldn't hope to get somebody as you know great as them again. You better, you know, recognize how good you've had it with them, et cetera, et cetera. That's the devaluation phase right after that will come the discard. Well, wait a minute, Angel. They just got through love bombing us. And then they go to you telling me they're going to turn around. And somebody would turn around and then after, you know, hey, I, got, I bought you this. We're going to go to a, yeah. go here. We're going to go to a concert. We're going to mm -hmm. then turn right around and tell me that I'm essentially a piece of garbage. And, and you Absolutely. better you can never do better than me. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to say, what's the next one? The next phase is going to be devalue or I'm sorry, discard, meaning, you know, I can't do this with you anymore. You're such Whoa. a loser. I have to wow. cut you out. Like you're such a cancer. You're toxic. I don't think you even recognize the kind of damage you've been doing to me. Like you're so wow. self-centered that you can't even, uh, you know, see what you're doing and I can't, I don't have time for this. So, um, the discard phase follows the devaluation phase and that is then followed by the there's an intermediate phase, which is sometimes called the hoovering stage, which is basically the narcissist has gone no contact. You feel terrible. You've been reaching out. You've been calling, texting, emailing, and in which case the narcissist is likely telling their flying monkeys or the people who support them. Hey, okay. look how crazy this person is. She can't, she's obsessed with me. He won't wow. stop leaving me alone. He's insane. Like, see, I told you he was crazy. Look how many times she called me. Yeah. You will see that the narcissist uh, will start using their other resources, such as those who have, um, who have supported the narcissist, who believe everything that they say, these flying monkeys to then they get interested. So now they want to go follow you on social media and see what you're doing. Whoa. Maybe they show up at your work. Maybe they drive past your house. So the narcissist starts employing the, the network of other supplies that they have, uh, that they have developed to, um, harass, spy on, uh, further devalue, further degrade, um, the victim in this situation It all. It, again, this depends on the type of narcissist. Some of them are very overt about this. They let you know, like everybody can't stand you. Everybody, you know, just can't wait to come by and see what a wreck you are. I've told so-and-so about your Facebook page. And I know that you're just posting photos to, you know, get attention because yeah, you're yeah, so, yeah. and, yeah. and so some, some of them are overt like that. And some of them are, are covert. They start fake profiles on social media. They start following you, hoovering, uh, just, just to stay uh, up to date with what you're doing. Um, because sooner or later, it's coming back around where the next cycle, the next phase in this cycle is the love bombing. They're willing to come back around after doing all of these other things just to see what then, to do what? they really believe they can come back in? Not only do they believe it, they're usually right. They're usually right because wow. they're finally giving the victim what they wanted. Okay. I, I called for three months. They didn't answer. And then they, I never heard from them for three months, but now all of a sudden out of the blue, they came back around. Narcissists are very good at reading people. We should never underestimate the fact that they, they absolutely know what's happening, which I talk to my clients about this all of the time. There will be an emotional and mental attachment to the narcissist as long as the trauma bond is in place. So in other words, you could have no contact, no physical contact, no um, email, social media, whatever contact with a narcissist and still be trauma bonded. And most people, most people are. They constantly think about the narcissist, wonder about the narcissist, uh, uh, overanalyze what may or may not be happening with the narcissist. 
And until that trauma bond is broken, the narcissist will always have an inroad to your emotional and mental state. So the narcissist absolutely knows when you're just on the uh, verge of moving forward, moving on with your life, forgetting about the narcissist completely and truly moving forward. And that's when they'll start the love bombing phase again. Okay. okay. So, so the moving forward, the per se moving on, moving forward. I love that expression better. That's just me. The moving forward with one's life and, and essentially you're saying that means breaking the trauma. That is breaking the trauma bond, essentially the, the moving forward part. You it, must is- break it or this cycle will always be there. Even, even if it has been, let's say years since you've gotten a divorce mm-hmm. and now you have to co-parent with a child, you will still be okay. trauma bonded to that person until it's broken. 